Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your final lesson in trigonometry for this week. And what we're going to be doing in this lesson is we're going to be applying what you've learned about the cosine rule. So let's look at our first example. It says determine the length of QR. Now grade 11s, I'm going to give you a little trick because sometimes it's difficult to decide if you need to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Obviously Sokotoa is easy because you've got a right angle triangle, you sort it. So if you want to think about it, the cosine rule is always used when we have two sides and an enclosed angle. If we've got two sides and an enclosed angle, you can think it almost makes a shape of a C. Okay, I'm being, I'm stretching it a bit, I know. But it kind of forms the shape of a C and then we use the cosine rule. Okay, so let's just write the basic cosine rule down since we know that we're going to be using it. So it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now obviously we need to designate these letters according to this thing here. The little letters are always, remember, the sides of a triangle and the big letters are the angle. And what I'm going to do now is highlight what we've got. So we have the angle 70 degrees, so I'm going to call that big A, okay? Then obviously this is little a, and then it really doesn't matter which way you go around. So then obviously I'm going to call that B and that little C. And they're asking us to find the length of QR, which means that we can use this beautifully. It works perfectly. We want A squared or A. We've got B, we've got C, we've got big A. Life is good. So let's just do it. We've got A squared equals B squared, which in this case is 4 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 4 times 13 cos of your big A, which is 70 degrees. And then all we do is pop it into our calculator. So let's do that. So we're going to go. So let's do it nice and slowly. Remember always to make sure your calculator is in degrees when you do this. So we've got 4 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 4 times 13 times cos of 70 and that equals 149.43. So I'm going to say a squared equals 149.43 and then we need to get a. Please don't forget to get a. So we have to go shift a of 149.43 and we get 12.22. So therefore a is going to be 12.22 centimeters. Not too bad. Hey, let's look at another example. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier. It says in triangle A, B, C, D is on BC, A, D, C is theta, so they gave us that, D, A equals D, C, D A equals D C which equals R each, B D equals 2 R, A C equals K and B A equals 2 K. Oh my hat! And they say show that cos theta is a quarter. Show that cos theta is a quarter. Okay, now I straight away am going to be looking at, let me just get a different color so that you can see what I'm doing. If I have to do cos theta, cos theta is in this triangle, right? Do you agree? So it's in this triangle, yeah. So let's start with playing with this triangle and see where we go. So obviously we're going to be using the cosine rule and the cosine rule says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now we are solving for cos theta. So I'm going to do that first before I substitute in all these funny letters. Okay, so I'm going to say cos a is equal to a squared minus b squared minus c squared 
divide by minus 2bc. If you're worried about how I got that, let me just do it nice and slowly for you. First, I take everything that doesn't have a cos there onto the other side. So I'm doing it up here. So it goes a squared minus b squared minus c squared is equal to minus 2bc cos a. And then I want cos a by itself. So what I do, I divide both sides by minus 2bc. And I divide this side by minus 2bc. And we cancel that with that. And you're left with cos a is equal to a squared minus b squared minus c squared over minus 2bc. Right, awesome. Now, again, in order to make this easy for ourselves, what I'm going to do is I'm designating certain letters here. So in other words, this d is going to be my a over here. So that's going to be my a, which means that this side here is my little a. And then it really doesn't matter, so we can let that little bit be b and that little bit be c. Okay, so let's substitute into this. So we've got cos of theta, because a is theta and they gave it to us, equals a squared. a squared is going to be the length of this, which is k. So it is k squared minus b squared. b happens to be r, so it becomes minus r squared minus r squared, okay, all over minus 2 times by b, which is r, times by another b, which is r. So do you agree we've got k squared minus 2r squared all over minus 2r squared? And that is our first equation that we have for cos theta. Now what happens if we had to look at the other triangle that we have here? What happens if we had to look at that triangle there? Right there. Now first of all, this angle here would be 180 degrees minus theta. Okay, so we're again going to be using this formula and this is still going to be our a which means this will be little a and then we'll leave that as little b this time and we'll put this as little c so we're going to be using our green triangle now so now we've got cos of 180 minus theta is equal to a squared which is all going to be 2k all squared minus b squared, so that's going to be r squared, minus c squared, which is going to be 2r all squared, all over this bit here, which is going to be minus 2, minus 2, times by b, which is r, times by c, which is going to be 2r. Okay. So let's simply simplify that. We've got 2k squared becomes 4k squared minus r squared minus 4r squared all over 2 times 2 is 4. So we've got minus 4r squared. And that there, wait, let me fix that, becomes 4k squared minus, minus, 5r squared all over minus 4r squared. But that's a cos of 180 minus theta. And if we think about this, if we do our cos diagram, we've got all stations to Cape Town, we know that cos is negative. So this becomes negative cos theta is equal to 4k squared minus 5r squared all over minus 4r squared. Therefore, cos theta is equal to four, minus 4k squared plus 5r squared all over, all over minus 4r squared. Okay, so now we've got two ratios with our cos theta. So now let's think about what we can do. Do you agree we've got this is equal to cos theta? 
and we've got this is equal to cos theta. So what we could do is we could solve these two equations and let them be equal and find a solution for this. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to raise everything. I'm just going to raise enough that I have space to write. So I'm going to keep the ones that we've got so far. The two half, re half equations we've got. We've got that this cos theta is equal to k squared minus 2r squared over minus 2r squared and we've got gosh it takes a while right so now let's equate these two so let's do this. So we've got k squared minus 2r squared over minus 2r squared is equal to 4 minus 4k squared plus 5r squared all over negative 4r squared. So now to get a common denominator, I'm going to take it and multiply them both by the 4r squared minus 4r squared. So we end up with 2 times by k squared minus 2r squared is equal to minus 4k squared plus 5r squared. Therefore we've got 2k squared minus 4r squared is equal to minus 4k squared plus 5r squared. So let's see if we can get a ratio going with that and I'm going to move it down to here so we can see what we're doing. So I'm taking all my k's to the one side and all my r's to the other side. So 2 plus 4 is 6, so we've got 6k squared is equal to 5 plus 4 is 9r squared. Therefore, we have, if we divide both of these by 3, we've got 2k squared is equal to 3r squared. Therefore, we can say k squared is equal to 3 over 2 r, r squared. Now let's substitute that into this equation. So we have that k squared minus 2 r squared over minus 2 r squared. But do you see at this point we can say that k squared is 3 over 2 r squared. So that becomes 3 over 2 r squared minus 2 r squared all over minus 2 r squared which then becomes that's one and a half minus two becomes minus a half. So you get minus a half r squared and then divided by minus two r squared. And now I'm going to get rid of the green because we don't need it anymore and it's in my way. Okay. And then the minus and minus cancel. And then if you don't see it already, look, the R's cancel, isn't that cool? So they would have got, we've got a half divided by two. What do we do when we divide? We tip in times. So it becomes a half times by one over two, which equals a quarter. Ta-da! So there we've got that cos theta is equal to a quarter. Wow, grade 11, that was a hectic question. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's think how we did this. First we did baby steps. We said, okay, fine, we don't know where we're going, but we know we need to use the cos rule. So it, and it said, show that cos theta is equal to a quarter. So we used this triangle, the one that had the theta in it initially, to get an equation for cos theta, right? Then we thought, well, we can't do anything with that. Maybe we can get something with other variables. Why would they give us all this other information if we weren't supposed to use it? So then we use this triangle to get another equation for our cos theta, which was this one over here, okay? And then we equated them to find and solve for one of them. And we could have solved for r squared, but in this case, I chose to solve for k squared. We substitute back in and you get cos theta is equal to a quarter. Now this question may seem intimidating, so I would suggest you go through it again just to make sure you understand it. But please understand grade 11, and this is very important. When I first look at this question, and I need you to believe this, as a teacher who's been teaching for several years, 
when I first look at this, I go, oh my word, what the heck are they asking me? Because there are so many questions out there. I obviously, after teaching for a billion years, still have not seen all the questions. Then I think, okay, fine, breathe. And then I say, right, what can I do? And I first look for something that I can do there. Then I say, okay, that's not going to get me anywhere. Let me see if I can do something here. Oh, look, we've got two equations. Let's equate them and see what we can do. So please don't understand, please understand that just because you can't see where the final answer is coming from when you start a question doesn't mean that you mustn't pursue it to see where it ends up. Because a lot of times we can start with something and then suddenly we see the end as it comes clearer to us. Right, grade 11s, that's it. Please go practice your cosine rule and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day. Thank <phone> you. <rings>